Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about mind-blowing examples of using OpenAI Chat GPT for cybersecurity, infosec, and hacking. Myself, Mohammad Subair, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So, without any further ado, let's get started. While well, ChatGPT, which is an AI-enabled chatbot, which is based on transformers that is also called as neural network architecture that is capable of processing long sentences and then auto-completing the input data. And it has opened the eyes of millions of capabilities of large language models that are also known as LLMs. And among millions of users who have used OpenAI's ChatGPT, many of them are cybersecurity experts. And security teams are also been using and busy exploring the world's most powerful chatbot to understand the chat GPT threat model in more details. So we'll see in this video that up to how much extent we can use chat GPT for our cybersecurity, infosec and hacking. We'll start with simplest of the examples and then we'll move towards some of the complex one. And we'll see that up to how much extent chat GPT helps us. So first of all, what I'll ask my chat GPT, I'll ask it to give me some of the ideas for cybersecurity projects. So I'll simply write here, give me some ideas for cybersecurity projects for a university student. And let's see what do we get as a result. And good thing is, even if you misspell something, it will take the right word on its own. Here are few ideas for cybersecurity projects that a university student could consider. So this answer shows that ChatGPT is smart enough in here. And now I'll move towards a bit of complex example and I'll ask my ChatGPT to provide me with some answers. So what I'll ask here, I'll ask it to generate some XSS payload. So I'll write here, please generate some XSS payload in Python. And let's see what do we get as a result. First of all, here it is defining what XS means. Then it is showing us the script that how does it look like and how we can create them. And then it is explaining it in more detail. And not only that, it is also giving us the script that how we can use it into our files. And here we have one of the example as image source. Then we have the link and it is in the script tag as you can see in here. So this is how it looks like and this is how it works. Well, in some of the cases, it might not work for you because at the moment it has only given us the descriptive information. What if I want to have a code? Let's ask it. Please give me the code written in Python and let's see if we get it or not. Yes, we do get a code in Python programming language and this is how it looked like. Well, it might not work as it might contain some malicious things in it and not only that, it will also make sure to not give you something that is copyrighted. Well, why does it do so? Well, ChatGPT is trained in such a way and it makes sure that it gives as clean and free data to users as much possible. And here you can also see that we have a caution in here as it says this content may violate our content policy. But as it is not harmful to ask about a payload, that is why it has given us a payload and its example. But at the same time, it has cautioned us with this message as well. Now let's ask something else. This time I'll ask my chat GPT to give me an example of XSS and I can also see the example of payload and how I can deploy it. So I'll ask here, please give me another example of XSS and how can I deploy it? I'll hit enter. Well, not only it will show us an XSS example, but it will also inform us and tell us that how we can deploy it. And here is the example and here it says to deploy this payload, you would need to find a way to inject it into the HTML code of a website or application. So why not ask ChatGPT to give us the code for that? So I'll ask here, please give me a code to deploy it. And let's see what do we get. Well, here it says it is not appropriate or legal to provide a code to deploy an XSS attack there are a type of injection attacks where an attacker injects malicious code and up to so on. 
while this is what i was talking to you about earlier that it is trained in such a way that it will only give you the information that is not copyrighted and it does not harm anyone that is why it has not shown us any code in here and this time i'll ask my chat gpt to write me a nuclei yaml template for bug bounty to detect a particular word while this is my query i'm going to find out word token hit enter and let's see what do we get well here it is producing a sample nuclei yaml template and it will look for the word that says token in it and it is in the python programming language as you can see here it says python 3.8 and here you can see we have a token in it and it has found out let's get it complete and then we'll see how does it look like or what more we can ask about it okay now i'll ask my chat gpt to give me the response status as 404 so i'll write here give me the response status as 404 hit enter and let's see if we can get it or not well here it is telling us that in case if we want to get the response as 404 we have to do these following things and here is the code so we just need to copy this one and we just need to paste it and we are good to go and now i'll ask my chat gpt to write me a code for burp suit to detect the word private key you can have your own query as per your liking here is my query i'll just hit enter and let's see what do we get but first of all it is explaining what a burp tool is how does it work and here we have http responses in it and it will look for private key in it so it will show us the code up to the extent that is required and from here you can directly copy the code and you can use it into your programs now this was the response from chat gpt and we have seen that how does it respond on to our query now what if i already have a code that i'm using into my cybersecurity, infosec or hacking but i have some problems with my code and what if i want my chat gpt to find out the problem for me well here i have one of my code and i want my chat gpt to find out the problems in it as you can see we have some of the errors in here so what i'll do i'll just copy this code and i'll go back to my chat gpt here is my chat gpt and i'll ask it what is the problem in the code so i'll write here please find out the problem in the following code and let's see what do we get i'll just paste the code in here let's hit enter well it is already telling us that there are few problems in the code first one is that we have a problem with the modules that is called as mechanize then we have browser then we have mechanized or browser then the word with is not written appropriately because it should be with the small w and then we have some more problems and here we have the corrected code from the chat gpt so what we can do we can simply copy this code and we can replace it with the one that we have into our documents and we are good to go and here it also says that this code should fix the syntax error and allow the script to run correctly so you just need to copy this code paste it in here and you are good to go as you can see now we do not have any problem yes there is some problem with mechanize which is a library we can talk about it later okay and here i have another example in which i'm brute forcing a website or you can say its login page with different password attempts but there is some problem with the code so what i can do i can again copy this code and now i'll ask my chat gpt to find out the problem so i'll simply write here find the problem in the following code and correct it and let's see what do we get well i know there are a lot of problems with my code but let's see if chat gpt is smart enough to help me with this brute force code okay there is one more thing that we will try out and that is we'll ask our chat gpt to provide us a code for the brute force attack and let's see if it give us or it says that it is against the policy or it is something harmful that it is cannot give and here you can see it is giving us the right code that we can use directly into our projects so let's wait for it and let it get complete and then we'll ask our chat gpt and here we are done and we can simply copy this code and we are good to go now i'll ask my chat gpt please give me a code to brute force and application in python and let's see what do we get well as i told you earlier that it will say that it is against the content policy and this is exactly what it has shown us and here it says here an example of simple python script that you can use to brute force a login from a website so this is a basic example that we can use but if we talk about something advanced it will not show you anything well let's say 
if you try to do the same that I wanted to do it now in like a week earlier or 10 days earlier, it might have shown you something as a response or it might have shown you an example of code. But ChatGPT is getting trained day by day and more and more on the queries that gets generated by people and that is why its content policy is also getting changed. So 10 days earlier, this might not be something that is harmful for the users. But now ChatGPT knows that this is something that should not be available publicly to the users. So that is why we have a caution in here and I think after some days we'll not see this one in here as well as it will completely block it. And now I'll ask my chat GPT to write me a code for SQL injection for my website and let's see how does it respond. So I'll write here, write the code for SQL injection for my website for testing purpose and let's see what do we get. Hit enter. And here it is defining what SQL injection is, what type of attack it is. And down here we have the code and this code is in Python. Okay, we are done with all the basic examples. Now let's move on to something advanced. Well, for that purpose, I have a code available and that is for the GANs. Well, GANs are generative adversarial networks that we can use for our, a lot of cybersecurity solutions. And for the moment, I have used it into my Python to find out the malwares in my Android applications. Well, generative adversarial network is a type of neural network. So at the moment, my code is working pretty fine and there are no problems with my code. As you can see, I have all the plots, I have all the graphs, I have the outputs, and I have everything that I wanted to have from this piece of code. But let's ask our chat GPT to create a code for our generative adversarial network that we can use to find out the potential malwares in our Android applications. I'll go back to my chat GPT and here I'll write, please give me a code to implement generative adversarial networks to find malwares in Android applications in Python. Let's have language as well. Hit enter. Let's see what do we get as a result. Okay, it says here we have a simple implementation of generative adversarial networks in Python. Well, obviously for generative adversarial network to work, we need TensorFlow, then we have NumPy, then it is explaining the generate function where we'll have our examples. And here we have the layers for our neural networks in which we have activation function as the ReLU, then we have Sigmoid, and it will optimize the functionality of our code. Then we have discriminative function because in generative adversarial networks, we have two parts discriminative part and generative part. Generative parts generates the examples and discriminative parts discriminate if the example is real or it is malware. Well, it's a big and complex concept, so I'll not go into the detail of it. But for the moment, as I have worked on this particular phenomena, I can say that this code is up to 90% correct and there is no problem that I can find in it. As you can see, I have all the functions as defined GAN then we have the training section of our model and at the moment this code is not completed. Do not worry, I can ask my chat GPT to complete this code. So I'll write here, please complete the fine train function and I'll hit enter. Okay, here it says here is the complete train function because you can see it has stopped working when it was on the train function. Well, it all depends on the training of your model, but how your algorithm is going to perform. The more training you have, the more good results you are going to get. So this is the train example, or you can say this is the train method code, and we can simply copy this code and we can use it into this particular model. And we are good to go. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy some code from here and I'll ask my chat GPT if there is any problem with the code. So for that purpose, what I'll do, I'll make some mistakes in this one and then we'll see if ChatGPT is able to find this out or not. So I'll see you after copying this code and making some mistakes in it. Okay, here I have my code and here I have asked my ChatGPT to find the problem for me. So here I have used two methods or you can say two function. First one is discriminator and the second one is generator. And these are the same functions that I told you earlier about that in generative adversarial network, we have two parts. We also have two of these in here, like this is the discriminator and here we have generator. Obviously the logic is different, but the work is same. Now I'll just hit enter and let's see if ChatGPT can find out the problem in the code that I have given it to it. 
So here it is working on it and here it says in the first line of define discriminator the activation function for the first dense layer is specified as Rela and we know that the activation function is called as Relu not Rela. And not only that we also have a problem with the define generator function in which latent dimensions are not defined properly. So we also have to make sure that these are defined properly and then only we will have the results from our model. And here we have the corrected code from chat GPT and we can use this code into our model and we can find out the problem or you can say the malware applications in the Android. So you can see that how accurate and how quickly it responds to our query and we can use it at any time. Okay, at the end the question is can we rely completely on chat GPT in terms of cybersecurity, infosec or hacking? Well, I would say that in terms of getting the information or in terms of getting the assistance, yes, we can rely on ChatGPT because it will give you some of the code, it will give you all the theoretical explanation and information about any of the things that you want. But in terms of the code, there are some limitations with ChatGPT because as soon as it senses that there is something that is against the content policy or there is something that can harm the users or there is something that is related to copywriting, it will not give you any result. It will only tell you that it is against the content policy of ChatGPT. So for that purpose, you have to create your own code. But yes, if you have a problem with your code or you find out any bug in your code, but you do not know how to solve this one, ChatGPT can help you out. You just need to copy your code and paste in your ChatGPT and ask your ChatGPT about the problem in your code. ChatGPT will assist you not only with finding out the problem but also with the solution. So I would say that this is a great assistance and a great tool that can help you with the development and you can say with the programming of your cybersecurity, your hacking and your infosec projects. And that brings me to the end of today's video. I hope now that you must have liked watching this one. If that is the case, please leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. And if you have anything to ask, please leave a comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Till the next video, take care.